Good morning. Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me and give me this opportunity to, speak, to stand here. Thinking, thank you for my Pastor Aaron and the Pastor Bruce. Thank you for having me here today. What also makes me excited is that I myself, I'm a rel religious asylum seeker. So I am not far from the refugee. I consider myself as a refugee. So this makes me so excited in both ways. And uh, the, the best thing is to speak in the refugee days is the uh, Samaritan parable that Jesus make a definition for who is neighbor. Uh, recently, I moved here to uh, Timber Bay. I, myself, I like to initiate conversation. And in the neighborhood, it looks like, you know, my neighbors, my new neighbors is not interested. Uh, it it feels different than Ohio. Every neighborhood I moved in, I, get, I initiate conversation, and I get soon to familiar with the faces and names of my neighbors. But in this neighborhood, it looks like different. And yeah, uh, this make, made me think about the definition of, of neighbor. Yeah, the Oxford Dictionary defines the uh, neighborliness as friendly and helpful behavior, especially between people live near to each other. It's about the proximity. proximity. The people are near to you, next door is your neighbor. And this makes me think also about my Middle Eastern definition or my, as a Christian, Middle Eastern, what neighbor means to me. To let you know about it, we, religion is make a lot of difference, is ingrained in everyday situation, in the, so, in the political, in the religious, in the social, in everything. So there was a, a, a word is called kafir. This is Arabic word, it means unbeliever, or it means infidel. It means, you know, anyone is not belonging to Islam. And deep in their heart, every Muslim, deep in their heart, because this is what Quran teach, that any other than Muslim, he's a kafir. So you can have your neighbor. Yeah, the neighbor next door to you, he can be okay with you, but you can expect it at any time that he can may turn it against you. If there is a rumor that a Christian kafir having an affair with a Muslim, or if there is anyone in the West is burning the Quran, so you can find out, you know, the uprising against Christians, against the local Christians. This happens far away but it still can affect me as a Christian. So it's still the neighbor, is ne the neighbor definition is the one who nicks me, but it's still it is not. It's a religion, is a stand between me and my neighbors. However, this, ne this my new neighbors, I know they are indifferent. They don't care about my ethnicity, about my color, about my language, but I believe they are, they won't hurt me. 
they won't judge me upon my religion, my color, my ethnicity, or whatever. So this is uh, what, where I come from. Religion is the main issue. The funny thing is, some people, when you bribe using the religion, <laughs> you know, we have a say in Arabic, in Nabi Ibn al prophet accept gift. So you can give anyone whatever as a gift, but mainly as a bribe. So it's a religion, make everything, you is color everything in our Middle Eastern society. So, but here is Jesus' definition. Jesus, in a certain occasion, there was an expert of law, our, uh, the lawyer. He stood up to put him in test. What must I do to inherit the eternal life? And Jesus asked them, and this is Jesus' way to answer any question. Has a question, he replied with another question. And this lawyer, he wanted to put Jesus in test, ended up answer his, the question he raised himself. And he felt embarrassed by answering the question he here is. So he answers other question. Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? He wants to justify himself. His in mind is that my neighbor is the Israel fellow, the one who belong, who I belong to them. But Jesus astonished him. He stuck when Jesus gave him this parable. By the parable, de Jesus' definition is that the, the, your neighbor and this lawyer, he gets the definition after he hears the story. He answered that, and the Jesus also compelled him to answer this question at the end. He answered the neighbor, any neighbor, any person who needs who needs my mercy? He, who needs my kindness? So let me grab three principles out of this, of, the, of Jesus' parable. So the first, the first principle is neighborliness is not about proximity. It's not about distance. It's about, it's, it's not about who is near, who is next to, to you. As I said, Oxford said, neighbor who is near to you, who are friendly, helpful. But Jesus uh, make uh, another, de 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 uh, another uh, definition. The definition is the if any, if your enemy, and by the, by the parable, the one who fell in the hands of the robber supposed to be Israel, supposed to be Jewish. And there was three passerby, three travelers. The, the first was the, Levi, the, the, the priest. The priest, he supposed to be near to him, supposed to meet every and every day. And, but he, when he came to the, the place, he didn't help. But before this man fell in, in the hands of the robber, he, he was an innocent man. And the near, the, those who come to near, near to him was the robbers. So the distance doesn't make sense. The robbers come to hurt come to rob, what he did for him. They beat him, they stripped him out of his clothes, and the clothes in the Middle East, it's about the identity. As I told, the religion is so important in the social life, 
and uh, the, the closest can tell about who you are. And this was in the past, and this was still in the present. When we attacked, uh, I, I will come to the story at the end, when we attacked by Muslims, I was my, with my wife and my daughter in the, in the car in a remote village. And we were attacked because we are Christian. You will, you will ask, what, how is this the villager who doesn't know you? How does he know that you are Christian? Because my wife and my daughter, they don't have hijab. And any, any woman in a, vill in a remote village have, have no, has no hijab, then she is a Christian. So these robbers come close, but they come close to hurt. So the distance, it doesn't make sense. And the, 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 the priest, he come close as well. He came to the place, and he saw the man, and he was indifferent. He go back the other way. We don't know what happened in his mind. Is he was busy? Is there religious, you know, reasons? What is going in his mind at this time? But by, by the law, there is a lot of uh, ex-Jesus, a lot of debate about what a priest can do when find someone between uh, death, between death and, la and, and life. But in one of these interpretations, he's supposed, to, he's supposed to, uh, to help him, to make things through. And the Levite as well came to the place. And he saw him, and he was indifferent as well. And he passed the, the other side of the road. So the proximity, the nearness, the distance doesn't make sense. But what makes sense here is the conviction. The conviction, everyone in this parable has a conviction. The robber has a conviction. The conviction of the robber, I can, you know, what you have is mine if I can take it. I can take whatever you have. It doesn't matter who you are, a good man, or if I can take what you have, this is mine, and they did it. And the priest and the Levite, their conviction, the, we are in, not in need. What you have is yours, what I have is mine. I don't give and I don't take. My, what, what is mine is mine, and what is yours is yours. But the good Samaritan, his conviction is, what I have is yours if you need it. If you need my time, if you need my help, if you need my resources, I will give it to you. I will be happy. It doesn't matter what, what color. It doesn't matter what your re religious. It doesn't matter what's your race. I will give you what I have if you need it. And this was the Samaritan. Notice here that there was a, a long animosity, a long hatred between the Samaritan and the Jews. And Jesus one time defines the Samaritan as a foreigner. As a foreigner, it means kafir in Arabic. So the Samaritan makes the mercy, the mercy act out of his humanitarian. How far? we as, as a Christian. So the, the conviction does matter. I am good in time. <laughs> so the conviction does matter. The distance between you and the neighbor or the needy is, doesn't matter. But the conviction, every one of us here has a conviction. What? Everyone test himself. What conviction I have? Is my conviction is to come just Sunday, and this is what, and the ministry is the pastors, 
we have a lot of conviction. What conviction we have to test our, our conviction? The third principle, the first principle is the, the, uh, the proximity doesn't matter. The conviction matters. And the third principle is the social and the cross-cultural barriers. There was a lot of social barriers between the Samaritan and the injured man. There is animosity. There is a lot of differences in the religion. He, if they, are, if they were met in the everyday life, this injured man, he would despise this Samaritan. He would look down for him. But the Samaritan didn't stop to ask himself, does this man deserve my, my mercy? Should I do this for him? He didn't ask himself. He moved. He moved by love. He, he, he moved and he went to him. There are two other religious people they want to off him, but he won't on him. He did a lot of things. He has his mercy, his act, mer mercy act. He, he helped him. He bondaged him. He took him to his, to, on his animal, and he, he took him to the innkeeper, and he even made uh, an open agreement with the innkeeper. Do all what, whatever he needs. And when I come back, I will be ready to pay you. What a love. What a compassion. He gave us time. He set aside his agenda. He, he, and instead maybe he was going to Jericho, he changed his way, and he is willing to do all this to help this injured man. He come cross to help. He set aside his agenda. He was able to help this man. The third point I want to uh, share with you how I can be a good neighbor. It's still good in time. <laughs> how can I be, be a good neighbor? Jesus told us we have, I, when I, I share the gospel with Muslims, I told them, you know, you lot, a lot of Christians come to uh, help you. Because you believe as the judgment day Jesus will come, Jesus Isa, son of Mary, will come as a, a judge. And he will ask, uh, he will, uh, some people will come to him. We, we, uh, he will say, you saw me hungry and do you feed me. I, and I will give all the, all the verse for them. And the people will say, when we did, we, we did this for you, he said, when you did it for, for my, you know, for the poor people, for the needy people. So we do this out of love. Because we, Jesus, asked us to love our neighbor, and we are the hands and the feet of Jesus. So if you want a good neighbor, share what you have. Share your time. Sit your agenda give a margin in your agenda. I know we are busy in a busy world. Every one of us are busy. Set a margin time in you in your agenda, in your schedule to help, you know, the ministries, many ministries around. Be a good Samaritan. Good Samaritan did this out of uh, humanitarian aid but we are doing out of Jesus' love. And uh, you have a neighbor in your area. There is a lot of, of neighbors. They are not 
away now in overseas to be a missionary, you have to go to overseas. But the people who are less fortunate to hear the gospel of Jesus, maybe your next door, invite them to your home. Go and initiate a conversation. They will be so happy to say hi and to come along or to ask them to come to come your your home your home so this is i just want i'm very concerned about the time Bruce. <laughs> okay but i just want to wrap up by two stories the first story is my story i was intimidated by islam all my life as a child as an adult as a as a pastor, as a father, I was intimidated by Islam. I have many questions about, about Islam. Why? This has gone with me from a childhood to be a pastor. And until I was attacked by Muslim mob in 2014. I, I was so near to death. I was humiliated, I was beaten. I, it was so hard when, when I remember it. I remember that God's grace extended to me to save me from death. Yeah, after being attacked, three days after our sons, I was my daughter, my, was my daughter, my wife, and my two sons was away in a Christian camp, and we gathered together, and we began to reflect. Why? Why this peasant, poor people who are struggling with life, consider me as, a, as an enemy? And the answer helped me to get over and to release these people from my life. First, it's in person. They don't know me. Second, because the, the agenda, they are victim, victim of poverty, poverty and victim of, uh, of propaganda, Islamic propaganda, and third, because this is what Jesus told me. This people is not my enemy. Satan, the devil, is my enemy, and I was able to forgive them. Forgiveness, forgive, forgiveness, need humbleness, need uh, to be encouraged to do what God's called us to do. And I ended up, came here, and uh, my plans, my ministry, it changed out of my forgiveness. The second story is when I came first time here, I met a friend, a member, he, he is seeing me right now, and uh, because I initiate conversation, we get to know that he, is me, he met a, a 20, 21 years young, young uh, 21 years Muslim, uh, Kenyan Muslim, and he has a questions, about, questions about Christianity. And he makes a connection. I made the connection right now, and this, you know, this young man, he is so open, he is defensive as Muslims, but I feel that God led me to give him enough information about Quran, about Christianity. I was able to correct his information. This is what I mean. You can do this. You can, if you have a neighbor, just invite him to your, ho your home or just make a connection with him if you need to help someone who knows the Quran, I, will, I would be here. I will leave my contact here, and I will be so happy if you need my help, and I'm here to help you. Thank you so much, and I just want to uh, share the prayer here. We can read it together. We all we need Jesus as our neighbor. Je Jesus was our neighbor who come to us. We were uh, broken. We are enemy. And he extend our, his love to us. Let us pray it together. Thank you, Jesus, for being my neighbor. When I was a sinner, 
and when I was acting like an enemy, and when I was broken, even when I refused you, you extended your forgiveness, love, and care to me. Help us to be good neighbors. Amen. Amen. Thank you.